Thank you, sir. Mr. Bustani, members, good to see everyone. Um, as many of you know, after I retired from the Hill five years ago, I went over to take over the National Fish and Wildlife Foundation. Uh, the foundation was created actually by Congress in 1984 to go out and create public-private uh, public partnerships around projects on the ground. Um, I don't see you often enough because I don't do policy and I don't lobby and I don't do advocacy. Instead, I just do projects and uh, really try to bring the best funding that we can bring, that we can garner both publicly and privately to uh, issues on the ground. Um, the Gulf of Mexico has been a primary focus of the foundation for many, many years. Uh, we have over $128 million worth of investments just in the last 20 years in the Gulf in that particular spill region. Uh, we've put two maps up there for you members to be able to refer to. One is a map that has red dots on it, which is really uh, all of the investments that the foundation has done on an array of conservation issues down there. The second map really focuses in on a strategy that we've already embarked on relative to the natural resources in trying to protect wildlife outside the spill zone, but it's the wildlife that would be most directly impacted by the spill. The idea being, one, to encourage wildlife to not go into the spill zone and to hold wildlife um, outside uh, through a lot of different means that we do. Um, the other strategy is to literally move some wildlife that is uh, precariously positioned around the spill area uh, to other locations which will be safer. And I'll come back and get into that. Uh, I guess the first thing I want to stress to everyone here is this truly is the largest environmental industrial disaster that this country has ever faced. And it is a learning experience at this point. Um, we really do not know exactly what the impacts are. Uh, we do know that the economy in Louisiana, as well as the rest of those Gulf states, are incredibly tied to natural resources, whether it's fishing, energy, navigation through the Gulf of Mexico or up the Mississippi River. The other thing that is very true, and we all must step back and realize, is the Gulf of Mexico was broken even before this spill. So the issues that we're going to face are enormous around the spill, but it also provides, I think, great opportunity to step back and to look at all of the other issues, whether it's ag chemical runoff up in the Midwest that comes down into the Mississippi, whether it's our conflicting policies around navigation versus wetlands um, along certain areas of the Gulf. And as we move forward and as we plan our way through this disaster, we have to remember what Mr. Bustani said, people and jobs are incredibly important, especially when it comes to natural resource conservation. You can't have one without the other. And we definitely cannot lock things off um, in order to think that we get the natural resource benefits because that will eventually give way uh, for greater economic development. Um, this will be an unbelievably complex recovery that we will go through over the next decade or more. Um, and people are going to feel the stress and the resources are going to feel the stress. And uh, we are still in a very short-term resp response period. It feels like it's been forever. Um, we really are just directly responding right now to the crisis. And after that crisis, we'll be going through this assessment process to understand exactly what the damages are. Um, and then, and only then, can we really start going through a recovery process. Um, I would stress to all of you, touching and feeling and understanding this disaster is incredibly important and I hope the committee finds time to go down there and to meet some of the people and to see some of the impact directly themselves. I know you see it every day, Mr. Bustani, and you hear about it every day. In some ways, this has been the front page of the paper, but I agree with the other witness. The public has not come in pouring uh, with philanthropic dollars. Now, we've been able to put $1.7 million on the ground so far. We have $12 million that we've obligated that we ex expect to expend it within the next 30 to 60 days, um, if not sooner, which we're trying to rush expenditure to the ground as quick as we can. We have tens of millions of dollars in commitments, um, other private philanthropic dollars, mostly corporate, mostly large donor and foundation related. Um, but that is nothing compared to what we saw in terms of the Haiti response and other issues that have come uh, before the American public. 
And I do believe there's a message out there, and it's a wrong message, and that's that philanthropic money is not needed. It's urgently needed, um, both from an environmental perspective and also from a socioeconomic and human perspective. Um, and anything we can do to get that message out there, I believe, is incredibly important. Um, right now, our uh, environmental targets that we're only able to work on really are around mig migratory birds and sea turtle work. Um, I'm out of time, so I really won't get into them in depth. They're uh, outlined in terms of our strategy. Uh, once the spill is capped, which we're all praying for that to be capped, uh, then we hope to then embark on a very aggressive fisheries and oyster reef recovery program as well as marine uh, mammal recovery program. So with that, again, I would ask everybody to refer to my uh, written testimony. Thank you.